uh, I would talk to some Hindus, like we'd get along, they seem like the nicest person on earth. And then at one point, they'll just slip in some sentences that, you know, it, it, it feels innocuous, but when you really hear what they are saying, you're like, wait a second. Like, I remember I would talk with my, with like, I, I won't say who, but with some people in my family. And uh, I just really would slide in. Oh yeah, have you heard of like, what this black guy did? It's very strange, right? And, and then like, you won't think much of it. And then a bit later, yeah, these black people, I tell you. Or like, you know, they'll bring in, oh, Muslims? Like, yeah, this this one person, she's a Muslim, right? Like, I remember I was this weird situation. I went to like a like a water park back home. Mm-hmm. And then like, I put my shoes on her table and it was, she was like the cashier and she insulted me. She was like, you shouldn't be putting your shoes there. I apologized, removed my shoes. And then she looked at my name. She's like, oh, you're a Hindu. You should have told me I thought you were Muslim. And I was like, um, okay. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to walk away. <laughs> you know? Wow. I have ex- I have an experience like that somewhere else that I can't tell. But I actually, wait, I have two experiences like that when it comes to... Um, I was trying to buy something, and I can't tell when and where. But they asked me if I'm a Muslim, because they don't sell to Muslims. Um. And I said, no, I'm not. And I'm like, yeah, because nobody would buy from us if we sell to Muslims. But I also have an experience because I dated um, for a while. I dated a Hindu girl, Fijian Hindu girl. And her mother wanted to make sure I'm not a Muslim. She didn't care that if I was a Hindu or not. She didn't, didn't matter. I could be atheist, Christian. She just like, are you sure you're not a Muslim? Like you're from originally were born in Iran. I'm like, no, I'm not a Muslim. I'm like, are you ever going to become a Muslim? <laughs> like go back to being a Muslim. I got like, no, like, and then like, it was weird to me because usually if you're an atheist, people have a problem with you that you're an atheist, right? But they did not care what religion you were as long as you were not a Muslim. Like all of them, Hindu, Christian, uh, atheist, Buddhist, nothing. We could be Satanist. They didn't care. Just not a Muslim. My daughter, yeah, like my daughter shouldn't be dating a Muslim. That was like, yeah. That was my experience. With um, yes, yeah. Uh, if it was a strange thing, my my one of my previous roommates and I we were joking about this, but I so back when I was in first year, I was in my. I, I call it the peak, kind of the angry atheist phase, the phase where you're super obnoxious about it. And um, we were joking about how, like, back then, so I don't, like, I don't, I've never really been in a relationship with women and stuff. I've always just had, like, one night stands and stuff like that. And we were joking about how so many girls that I would sleep with, it, they turned out to be super religious. And, like, they would have, like, they would be super crazy women, not, not in the bad way. Like, I don't mean, Sorry, I should have phrased that better. I meant that they had, they were into stuff that was super out there. And my roommate was joking about how, like, he, I guess he's agnostic, but he doesn't really care about the issue. I don't, I don't know what term he would use, but he would joke about how, like, every girl he has sex with were all atheists, and they didn't have any such like crazy kind of, not crazy, but <laughs> they didn't have such like out there, like, you know. That's the only thing. You know, sometimes when, you know, a lot of times people ask me, I mean, is there anything good about religion? And I always say, no, there's nothing good about religion. But if I have to be honest, that's the only thing, only thing that is good about religion is that, you know, it gives us, (laughs) I don't know how to say it without getting canceled. But yeah, yeah, people that, making this taboo for for many years has given us a lot of twists and that we could enjoy i don't know i don't know how else to say that but yes i agree like there was some all right is it okay if i share one story it's it's quite funny but like i don't know if you have like restrictions in terms of like content that you want to talk about no go ahead no go ahead like there was this girl, like she was like the first person I had sex with. It was like maybe five years ago now. Uh, we we go into her room. She has like a 
a Jesus cross, like a huge cross on her wall. Mm-hmm. And we like, I don't know, at one point she for like, we just, she had like a, a bunch of books. And I think I brought up that I was reading Richard Dawkins. And she says like, oh, I love his biology books. And then she starts ranting about Dawkins' views on atheism. And she starts trashing atheists. And mm. so weird. So uh, when she was giving me like a blowjob, I was looking at her Jesus cross. And I was like, if you only knew who I am, like, I don't know if you'd be happy right now. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe she would be more happy. Maybe she would like, this is like some, you know, evil stuff that we're doing. I don't know. Again, I don't, yeah, I, I, the people that have never seen sex as a taboo, I don't know. It, it, to me, it seems like they don't appreciate. It just doesn't seem like, I think, I, I, I don't know. Maybe this is wrong to say because it's a lot of people suffer from sex shaming, um, and feeling, ta- feeling that they're doing something wrong, feeling disgusting. But sometimes I feel like maybe all those years of suffering we go through is worth it because it becomes when we actually get liberated from it, I feel like we enjoy it a lot more than people that never saw it. But the people who never saw it as anything bad or something to be ashamed of, they just like treat it like, oh yeah, like just like having a meal or something, right? And I feel like we we who went through all the sex negativity and the shaming i think we appreciate it in a way that people who never had that can it's the same thing with freedom i think right this is a similarity between sex and freedom right people who are all born under country in countries where freedom of expression was always a thing they don't appreciate the rights that they have they don't understand that how unique and special it is for them to be able to to say whatever they want and express themselves and be who they be openly who they want to be. They don't appreciate that, right? The people like us who came from places where you couldn't say that and now are here, we know how important it is to protect these rights, right? So I think like, yeah, I mean, it's very similar. Yeah, uh, just to bring it back to the like the topic of Hinduism, like I remember that, um, it's okay, don't worry. It's, it's a joke. Right? It's a joke. Right? <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, um, I was talking with my mom about it, and she would often, like she would often share with me how my grandfather, so like her father, like how he would have a thing he would love, like trashing astrology, and sometimes she, he would have like Jehovah Witnesses who would knock on his door. He would bring them in his place, and he would just start debating them. So my mom was saying when she saw me go through my like my phase in atheism when I was just arguing with people like all the time about it, she was like, uh, I reminded her of her of her father who would bring in um, Christians to debate them, and he would like he I think he believed in like a form of Hinduism that was considered more progressive, not progressive politically progressive, but progressive in terms of like they didn't believe as many crazy things as other Hindus did. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, I just heard yeah. the. Yeah, don't <laughs> don't worry. I'll just highlight them. Don't you? Yeah. You keep you, you continue saying what you're saying. I, I'm highlighting some of the comments. And uh, that's something I wanted to talk to you about. So I was uh, I was listening to. Wait, a... can I actually respond to some of these comments because people are misunderstanding me? Uh, Sony saying so is Armin saying that sex is too open. If it, if if sex is too open, it loses its speciality. No. Some Adam is saying, turns out Armin still has some conservative in him. He turned uh, bash, uh, bashful when uh, guests talked about his sex. No, guys, I'm. you guys are completely, no, I think sex should be open as open as possible could be. There should be no taboos. There should be no shame. I just think that the people that went through the shaming, through the uh, demonization, and through all the self-disgust, we, I think we just have a better appreciation for what, how good it is for sex, for the lack of sex negativity, for the openness, for, for there not being any shaming. I think like we, we could tell, we could, we enjoy it a little bit more because we know how bad it is when you don't have that. Right. So I, I think it should be like this. I just think like we enjoy it more, right? Just because, like, if I'm starving to death and all of a sudden you put a lot of food in front of me and I enjoy it more than I, every meal, any meal that I ever had in my life, that doesn't mean that, oh, 
this was such a great experience. We should starve people close to death so that they could enjoy food like this. No, that's not what I'm saying. I think people should have access to food. Just because I feel like I enjoyed this more than anyone else could enjoy a meal, that doesn't mean that everybody should go through the experience of being starved to death just to have this pleasure. Anyways, go, Vikram. But so when I was talking to my mom about it, um, like I, I started figuring out even as a kid that, um, that when whenever some people would use like like religious arguments in general conversations a lot of time those people don't really believe in those arguments it's just an excuse they use like what they believe in is something that's deeper that and the arguments is just uh, like a shield to protect whatever they believe in like for example um there's a celebration called Diwali, and my mom would always say that we only cook certain specific Indian sweets for Diwali and we never cook them before because we, when we cook it, first we give it to the God and then we eat it. But for some reason, she only, like we, we were only able to give both sweets to God for Diwali. I hated everything about Diwali except the sweets because all <laughs> we do is eat them. Uh, eventually, uh, so I left religion and my mom's not really like, yeah, <laughs> she, she is whatever she is, but she's not, to into religion anymore. So I was talking to her about it. I was like, listen, we're not, I wasn't thinking in grade 12 at that point. We're not really religious anymore. We can just cook those sweets whenever we want. And then she told me like, hey, the reason that I told you that is because those sweets take so much time to make that I didn't want to do them more than once a year, just because like, I didn't want to go through the hassle of it. And oh. <laughs> That's a clever month. Oh, it's that's like, clever. I was like, what? Oh, like, yeah. This whole time, like, I've been waiting, like, for a whole year just for that one time. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> like, son, I have to tell you something. <laughs> yeah, sure. That is such a friend. That's good. <laughs> like, mom, we're not religious anymore. We could have these sweets anytime we want. Like, son. I have to tell you something. <laughs> that's good. That's good. That's yeah. a good story. That's a, okay. And um, so that's, like, I thought this was a joke, but to bring it to more serious stuff now, that's why I feel like debating theists is ultimately pointless because they don't like, if you debunk each argument they make, all the dudes that will come up with a different argument, but the argument itself is not why they believe. Like if let's say you explain why the Kalam cosmological argument is flawed, no one will start rethinking their theism as a result of that. They'll just find another argument. They'll look into like Thomas Aquinas or they'll look into like some random person. Right. Like what do you think of that? No, I mean, I, honestly, I think the arguments for the existence of God, if you look at them, if you remove all the philosophical fluff around them, they're so childishly stupid that the only way to make them seem intelligent is to confuse the reader by dressing them up in seemingly nuanced and comp like using uncommon vocabulary and complicated sent uh, sentence structure to make something so dumb and so basic seem somehow intelligent, but they are once you remove all that dressing, what you're left with is so pathetically and obviously dumb that I, it's amazing. It's not just the fact that we have an answer to all of them. It's the fact that to me, it's bizarre that they're even given any credit to seem like, to, to even call them philosophical arguments, I think is like a, it's a shame to whatever is labeled philosophy to be able to even include that in, in if that is included as a category can be categorized as philosophy then i mean screw philosophy like what the hell is this stuff right this is like i mean it's so it's so basic it's so dumb and i think like this is why i have given up on even arguing about it i think like we have moved we should have moved way past all of this like ages ago um and i think like constantly debating them is giving them more credit than they deserve i don't know what do you think 
Yeah, oh, I don't know. I'm only speaking from my experience. So everything I'm saying, if I say anything wrong, it's just like what I what I learned and what I know. So I might be I might just be completely wrong here. But um, uh, one thing also that um, uh, sorry, when I was saying this, I forgot my train of thought. Uh, we were talking about uh yeah the arguments and why it's not that important. I feel like to me at least before I got into like reading Dawkins and Hitchens and Harris and Matt Dillahunty, which like Matt Dillahunty is the only one when it comes to atheist debates that I still watch. He's like probably my favorite and maybe like cosmic skeptics a bit, but I don't know, Matt Dillahunty is like my favorite. But uh, one thing that uh, for me at least is that none of these arguments ever convinced me to be an atheist. I had become an atheist first and then I had looked into like a online atheism. Like I feel I shared that story with you, but when I was 15, I I think I was 14, I went to like this lake where we would pray with my mom. And uh, I would, uh, I think uh, I looked at the, like, at the lake and I was kind of, I think I told myself like, I don't know if this God we're praying to exists. Like it might, but I'm not sure. So I guess, but I didn't know that I'm agnostic, but that's probably what I was. And then a year later, so I was 15 or 16, I went to the same lake to pray with my mom. And like, I wasn't like, I didn't do the, like that, that thing. And my mom just like, she kind of slapped me on the shoulders, not, not strongly, but like she just tapped me on the shoulders and she was like, you should be praying right now, like pray. So I just closed my eyes. Mm -hmm. Then I opened my eyes, I looked to my left, to the left. I see my mom, like she closed her eyes and she's praying. So I put my hands back down and I was like, yeah, no, this is nonsense. There is no God. Like I've been wasting my time these last like 16 years. <laughs> like, and. <laughs> <laughs> I told my mom this story, like she just burst out laughing every time because uh, she also didn't really believe in that stuff, but it was a cultural thing. So every year she would just pretend, but she thought that I believed in it. So she was pretending for me while I was pretending for her. <laughs> you know, how, that's, that's, that's so mo much more common than people realize. Like there are so many families that there's like, I've, I've read so many coming out stories and there are a lot of times when somebody like comes out to their brother or to their family and they're like, you know, they're like, I'm you guys I have to tell you, I don't believe in God. And sometimes they get shy. Like, you know, like you don't believe in God. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I don't believe in God. I was like, I was doing it for you. And like, why oh, you were doing it for me. I was doing it for you. <laughs> like like when I like, they realize like for, it's been like for the past five years, they're all been pretending for each other. And none of them actually believe. It. It's, it's, it's so, by the way, Hossein left you a comment. Um, Hossein is saying, Vikram, the debates aren't for convincing who you are debating, but it does convince viewers or at least provokes them to ask more. Yeah, I agree with that. Morta is saying, yeah, it's bizarre that people even think uh, there are like things except that uh, experts disagree on. We made it to be like they are on even grounds or something. Yeah, okay. Cool. I'm going to... All right. You want to... Oh, Marta is saying that's so wholesome. Um, and also scary. <laughs> and also subscribe to our newsletter because if we get removed from all these uh, platforms, at least we could reach out to you. And guys, by the way, if you subscribe to our newsletter, you get a free copy. Uh, why there's not... Where's your copy, Susanna? Get it, get it, get it. We're doing promotion. You get a free, it's not even promotion, it's free. Okay, so if you subscribe to our newsletter, link in the description, you get a free copy of Why There's No God. Ah, come on, like I'm handing it out for free. Okay, it's a bestseller on Amazon and you get it for free. So subscribe to our newsletter and you get a free copy of Why There's No God sent to you. Link in the description.